Hello, I'm Professor Donald McEachran, and I have a question. Biological evolution, what is it? And what does it mean for biomedical engineering and the future of humanity? Now, in order to answer this question, I'm going to stop this share for a second and share something else, a different screen, a video, produced by Harvard Medical School. So what we ended up building was basically a Petri dish, except that it's two feet by four feet. And the way we set it up is that there are nine bands, and at the base of each of these bands, we put a normal Petri dish thick agar with different amounts of antibiotic. On the outside, there's no antibiotic. Just in from that, there's barely more than the E. coli can survive. Inside of that, there's 10 times as much, 100 times, and then finally the middle band has 1,000 times as much antibiotic. And then across the top of it, pour some thin agar that bacteria can move around in. The background is black because there's ink in it, and the bacteria appear as white. First, you see they spread in the area where there's no antibiotic, up until the point they can no longer survive. Then a mutant appears on the right. It's resistant to the antibiotic, it spreads until it starts to compete with other mutants around it. When these mutants hit the next boundary, they too have to pause and develop new mutations to make it into 10 times as much antibiotic. And then you see the different mutants repeat this at 100. And after about 11 days, they finally make it into 1,000 times as much antibiotic as the wild type can survive. And so we can see by this process of accumulating successive mutations that bacteria, which are normally sensitive to an antibiotic, can evolve resistance to extremely high concentrations in a short period of time. And so I am going to reestablish the share on the material we were talking about. So biological evolution, what is it? And what does it mean for biomedical engineering and the future of humanity? Well, at least one question has been answered by that video. Biological evolution is a change in the inheritable characteristics of a population over time. And what that video shows is that time can be very short. Now, there are other ways of thinking about biological evolution. We think about our ancestors. Here we have a 1.8 million year old hominid skull. We think about the legacy effects of biological evolution, that we have behaviors and structures that once were adaptive, but are no longer functional, but we retain them because they are not so severely hampering as to be eliminated by natural selection. So here we have hips that are found in baleen whales that clearly functioned for an extra, extra pair of legs, which no longer exist. But we also could thought, think about development. The remaining elements of pieces of our evolutionary history. For example, human fetuses will develop tails at a certain point in development, even though they are typically not born with them. Or we can think about extinction. Here we have the Tasmanian wolf thought to be extinct. And by the way, this is a marsupial. They are much more closely related to opossums than they are to dogs, wolves, or coyotes. Or maybe we just think about sequence homology and biomedical informatics. The idea that sequences of genes in different living organisms share common elements due to having a common ancestry. But all of this leads to questions. 
questions like, what does gender truly mean? And how did genders evolve? Why do we sleep? And what is the cost of sleep deprivation? How do we communicate? And what is the true cost of masking for so long, especially in young children? How do we learn? And why do we forget? It's very annoying that we forget so much. How do pandemics develop and evolve? And why are humans so aggressive? We seem to be a very violent species, and this is certainly important in modern society. Well, those questions and more will be investigated as we search for answers to the evolution of humanity in BMES 571, Biological Evolution, Applications to Human Health and Performance. And I urge you to register for this fascinating course in the winter term, starting in January, 2023. Thank you.